The worst situation is when something works almost, but not quite. Hi there, and welcome to Joe Code's workbench. A free turntable found its way onto my workbench. The belt was missing, and the previous owners said that the motor didn't turn. They were right. I checked the electronics, and while measuring the motor voltage, I accidentally connected two pins with my probe. That gave the motor a 12 volt burst. It suddenly spun to life, and it works completely fine since then. But just for safety, and off camera, I opened it up, cleaned the brushes, oiled the bearings, and resoldered all connectors. That was easy, so I thought. No need for a complex fix or a YouTube video about it, because all I need to do is ordering a new belt, putting on a record that I like and enjoy. Then I noticed something. That strobe dot here is supposed to stand completely still. Welcome to a deep dive into troubleshooting this lovely Meet 90s Technics SL BD22 turntable. The strobe dots are for adjusting the platter RPM, and it should be possible to get the dot here completely still using the pitch knob. My dot wobbles back and forth. That indicates periodic speed fluctuations, known as wow and flutter. This machine was one of Technic's cheaper models back in the day, but it is still a decent machine, and it should have a wow and flutter below 0.1%. When I measure my machine's war and flutter, I get around 0.3, which is a bit too high for my taste. As comparison, here is my Technics SL5. That machine is a higher end direct drive turntable and it performs great even after 40 years. There are many possible reasons for bad war and flutter. The turntable has what is called a frequency generator servo speed control, and the motor has its own speed sensor. That sensor could be faulty, or the controller I see. And of course, there could be bad caps or transistors. On the mechanical side, there could be a problem with the platter, or the motor or the belt could be bad. The belt is new and the motor seems fine, so let's rule that out. Before investigating the problem, I disassembled the mechanics and cleaned everything. Then I applied new grease to the surfaces that are marked in the Technics service manual. That manual has also a detailed troubleshooting guide for the electronics, so let's continue there. I started with measuring all voltages and they were fine. There's a section for uneven rotation in the guide that recommends checking some signals. The sensor signal from the motor should be 0.2V peak to peak with an offset of 3V. My scope tells me that the sensor works fine. That signal here seems fine too, but it is missing the DC offset. The two control signals of the servo IC seem fine as well. I also checked the resistors and capacitors mentioned in the service manual, and they are all fine. These parts rarely die anyway. I did one additional check. This is the signal that the base of the motor driver transistor gets from the servo IC. I expected DC instead of a 15Hz signal, but I guess that is how the servo chip works. When I put any load on the motor, the whole wave moves up. That tells me that the active speed regulation works. When I put the platter on, the signal starts to look interesting. It shows these repeating bumps that correlate with the uneven run. Something here is not right. Maybe the platter bearing is bad? When I turn the platter by hand, it runs very freely and completely silent. 
I still took the platter bearing apart and noticed that there are some scratch marks on the inside of the brass tube. I polished the tube on the inside and I also polished the bearing rod. Unfortunately, that didn't fix anything. At this point, I was stuck. Motor, belt and platter seemed fine. The sensor seemed fine and all other components too. But my servo IC could be faulty because there was one signal that did not match the reference. And so I went on eBay and bought a new one. Delivery took a while. After arrival, I unsoldered the old IC and put the new one in. After that, my result was exactly as it was before. Slowly, I got frustrated. I cleaned the belt, the pulley and the running surface and checked all capacitors. Nothing changed. Then I noticed something. My platter moves from side to side a little bit. And in addition, it is ever so slightly crooked. The low spot is here and the high spot is here. So I guess the belt is constantly repositioning itself a bit on the small barrel shaped pulley and that might cause the uneven run. The bearing rod seemed well connected to the mounting plate and neither the mounting plate nor the bearing rod itself looked bent. But honestly that is hard to tell. I was afraid that I make it worse when I try to bend anything. But these two screws here were roughly perpendicular to the rotation axle of the arrow and I was able to use that to my advantage. I filed down that post here by a tiny amount to correct the position of the bearing plate. After that my platter was decently level. But it still moved more than I liked. There's a single steel ball in the top which is supposed to be greased and I think I forgot that when I cleaned the bearing. I added new grease to the bearing and now the platter feels better. I measured the wow and flutter again and got to 0.2% so that was promising. Just to rule out the belt for another reason for the wow and flutter, I ordered another, slightly pricier belt for the turntable. Delivery took a bit, again, which is one of the reasons why this video is about a month late. I noticed right away that the new belt is wider than the other one and also 30% heavier. It also fits more snugly around the pulley. And finally, my wow and flutter went down to around 0.1% on both 33 and a third and also 45 RPM. The value is not perfect, but I take it. Every Rhinel record that has its hole punched slightly off center creates a larger wow and flutter. So this machine is perfectly fine for high fidelity listening. Now I can confidently hand it over to a new owner. At the end I think it was a combination of the dry bearing, the crookedness of the platter and a suboptimal belt that caused the wow and flutter in the first place. And I learned a lot about troubleshooting so it was worth the effort. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. And see you next time.